One, I'd like to call this meeting of the Rules and Reference Committee to order. We convene today's hearing to hear from the nominees of the Civilian Police Review Board. But before starting, it is important that we take a moment to recognize the recent news that Officer Derek Chauvin has been found guilty on all charges. Today's guilty verdict does not bring back George Floyd. It doesn't bring back Andre Hill, Casey Goodson Jr., or those killed by law enforcement across our nation, but it does give us hope hope for accountability and better policing in the future. Uh, the bridges of trust are tenuous. However, we can rebuild them to ensure safety in our neighborhoods. And while this moment of accountability is a critical step in the march for equal justice, it doesn't prevent the next unnecessary shooting or use of force. The path to lasting reform is to reduce the number of dangerous interactions between residents and law enforcement. We must find new ways to address mental health, substance abuse, homelessness, and nonviolent offenders. Our vision for an Office of Alternative Crisis Response is the necessary next step. We've asked law enforcement to do too much for too long, and truly reimagining public safety demands deep systemic changes. At this time, I'd like to provide the opportunity for my colleagues to uh, speak. And since uh, I am co-chairing this hearing with uh, Councilmember Dorrance, I will uh, turn it over to you. Uh, thank you, Council President Hardin. Um, appreciate your remarks to, to start off tonight. It's, um, I think, ironic that we're here tonight talking about um, creating a institution that provides additional transparency and hopefully trust into the public safety infrastructure that we have here in, Col in Columbus. You know, I've spent most of my life as either a person either studying the law or practicing law and too often our justice system has let down communities of color over and over again. And I think, as you said, today brings us a small moment of hope and uh, talking about something like the Civilian Review Board in Columbus is what we're supposed to do with those moments in, in which we see we have the opportunity to affect systemic change. Um, and that's why I'm glad to be here with my colleagues tonight and glad to be here talking about how we use these moments to push public policy that does exactly what you just talked about, Council President. So um, it's, a, it's an honor to be here with, with you. It's an honor to be here with the nominees for this board, an honor to be here with my colleagues. But I want to, before we get too far into the hearing, I wanted to offer an opportunity for uh, our other council colleagues to, to chime in as well. Uh, council Member Favor. Thank you, Council Member Dorans, and uh, good evening to. Uh, everyone. Today we get to take a sigh of relief. Uh, being clear that there, there are no true victories. Um, someone is going to jail and someone has lost their life. I think about all of the names, all of the people who have never experienced what we're experiencing right now. Some kind of accountability. Rodney King, Michael Brown, Philando Castile, Elijah McCain, Breonna Taylor, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, even in Columbus, Casey Goodson Jr. and Andre Hill. This is truly just the beginning of a long road ahead of us to find true accountability and policing. And so my heart goes out to all those who are still waiting for accountability for some type of justice. Um, and I take no pleasure in uh, any of this. It's truly heart wrenching that it takes all of this that you have footage, cell, cam cell phone footage and body camera footage, uh, protests, property damage, people losing their lives. And it's all caught on tape. And even up until the moment the verdict was read, I, like many others, was absolutely scared because I did not know what would happen, what was going to be the verdict. And today the system worked. And so I am excited that today we're here 
uh, to, to meet with those who have been uh, nominated for the Civilian Police Review Board. It is time for our city uh, to confirm that we are committed to true reform. And I look forward to uh, getting to know uh, the, the nominees a, a little bit better this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to address you all. Thank you, Council Member Favor. Uh, Council Member Mitch Brown, I don't know if you had anything to share this evening. Thank you, uh, Councilor Dorn. I hope you can hear me. You know, um, I'm reminded of the words of Emma Till's mother. Let them see what they did to my son. And for our nation to witness and will forever be ingrained in our consciousness. Similarly, as we watched and rewatched the video of his death, we will never forget the images and the that sprung from that. Enforcement has led to justice today. Our work is not over, but this is a moment we will not forget. President and, and uh, Councilman Dorrance. Thank you, Council Member and uh, Council Member Remy. Thank you, Council Member Doran. Um, I'm like many of you today. I think we all took a collective sigh of relief that justice was rightfully served in this case. After the horrific injustice of a man losing his wife at the hands of a law enforcement officer that was uh, egregiously derelict as a human being in care of somebody that their sole responsibility should be to protect and serve. And so, you know, I paused and, and I say, I said a prayer to the families of George Floyd that hopefully they can begin to find peace in the, with the guilty verdict of Derek Chauvin, but it certainly will never bring him back. Or, I'm sorry, the guilty verdict of Derek Chauvin and certainly won't bring back George Floyd. Um, but I thought, you know what, the work that we're doing tonight here in Columbus, Ohio, the verdict that was, was uh, given today, handed down today, sends a very, very, very clear message that accountability for any excessive use of force, whether you're wearing a badge or not, uh, and especially when it leads to one's death, this is the type of work that we, we have to continue to do and push forward the agenda to make sure that everyone feels that they can, they, they, they can want for once after centuries of injustices, they, they can feel safe in walking down their own streets, regardless of a police officer is driving by or not. So, I'll just say that, you know, I'll continue to pray for, for our country, for our city, and certainly for the family of George Floyd. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Remy. I uh, appreciate all of our members being here tonight to um, share this moment and talk about this subject, which I think are directly connected as it relates to um, our community here in Columbus. Um, so I want to thank everyone for, for their work coming uh, together for today, today's hearing. Uh, the nominees, I uh, appreciate them being here. Uh, Deputy Chief of Staff uh, Pashadi and Council Staff, appreciate them being here tonight and preparing. I want to thank the clerks team, uh, named, namely Angie Burke and Mark Carter for, and the CTD team for broadcasting this virtually. Uh, I want to thank the members of the public who are here tonight to learn more about the civilian review board process and these nominees specifically. Um, looking forward to hearing from uh, those nominees tonight. Um, and it's an excellent opportunity for, for them to share with the community about their perspective and how that can be helpful uh, for forming uh, this kind of institution. Um, our city's expectations are, are very high uh, about what this body can do. Um, literally here today, 
uh, our community has experienced yet another shooting uh, with law enforcement and, and a member of our community. Uh, a, a incident that eventually this body will have some role in providing some transparency to folks in the community. Uh, and it's important for us to, to give folks an opportunity to hear from the people that are going to help set the foundation for what this institution uh, will be for our community into the future. Um, we have to get this right, whether it's the, the verdict that was read today, the events here in Columbus this afternoon, uh, we have to get this right. This is an important uh, piece uh, of, 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 of an institution to make sure that our community can come together and, and move forward in an appropriate way uh, with community members and law enforcement. So I appreciate the folks who are here, the nominees who've been willing to step forward uh, to serve, uh, their willingness to be that foundation and be willingness to tackle a very, very difficult job. Um, and it's, it's important to have the right people there. And uh, so thank, thank you to them for stepping forward and asking for that great responsibility. Uh, I wanna turn it over at this point to Mayor's uh, Deputy Chief of Staff, Kate Fashadi, um, to allow her to make some remarks ab about um, the board itself. Kate, you, you with us? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, council President, Safety Chair Brown, Council Member Dorns, and other council members on behalf of Mayor Ginther, um, thank you so much for allowing us to take part in this evening's hearing to talk about the selection of the members for Columbus's first civilian review board. Before we get started, I wanted to offer a few words on the conviction of Derek Chauvin in the murder of George Floyd. Today, we saw what the justice system that the justice system can work. While there may be a certain sense of relief at this verdict, uh, the conviction will not bring George Floyd back, and we must continue to strive for justice in our own community, which is why the Civilian Review Board is more important than ever in Columbus. Um, in July 2020, the mayor <clears throat> seated the Civilian Review Board work group to structure a Civilian Review Board a recommendation from Columbus Community Safety Advisory Commission. To that point, Columbus was the only major metropolitan area without any kind of civilian oversight of law enforcement. This absence of oversight has continued to erode the trust between the community and the division of police. The work group that was seated was composed of the following community members, Jasmine Ayers of the People's Justice Project, Fred Benton, an attorney at Frederick D. Benton Law, Bo Chilton from Impact Community Action, Lewis Dodley from Com Impact Community Action, Stephanie Hightower, President of Columbus Urban League, Frederick Lamar of the Past Baptist Pastors Conference, Kent Marcus from the Columbus Bar Association, Jonathan McCombs from Franklin University College of Health and Public Administration, Ishmael Mohammed from Ishmael Law Office, Denzel Porteous from Stonewall, Columbus, Asleen Rodriguez from CODA, Janae Stevens from John Mercer Langston Bar Association, and Bori Sater Seymour in Peace, Kyle Strickland of the Kerwin Institute, Aaron Sink from the Columbus Safety Commission, as well as the Southside Area Commission, Nana Watson from the NAACP, and Anthony Wilson from the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement. The work group studied best practices used in other cities and brought back the right review board recommendations for Columbus. The group helped guide important decisions, including how the board was to be seated, how it will operate, and what powers will be afforded to the board. Some of the recommendations included a nine member civilian review board with staggered three year terms, board appointments by Mayor Ginther in consultation, Columbus City Council, board diversity and rage, race, age, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, and a majority of its members living in the city of Columbus. Um, the board will receive ongoing training in police tactics, constitutional law, de-escalation, implicit bias, and other important subject matters. The board should be given broad investigative powers, including subpoena powers, and the board will set minimum qualifications for the new inspector general. In November of 2020, voters overwhelmingly approved an amendment to the city charter to establish the Civilian Review Board and the Inspector, Inspector General for the Division of Police. In December of 2020, the application process was open to the community 
and closed on January 15th of 2021. The city received over 200 applications and conducted 22 interviews. I would like to thank Nana Watson, president of the Columbus branch of the NAACP, as well as Pastor Michael Young, lead pastor of City of Grace Church, our community partners who gave up countless evening and weekend hours to help us secure the nine exceptional candidates that we're advancing to you this evening. Um, again, I'd like to thank you City Council for allowing us to participate in this evening and look forward to working together as we advance the work of the Civilian Review Board. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Deputy Chief Fashadi. Appreciate that here tonight. Uh, Council President, I wanted to allow you to uh, take the reins from here for uh, the nominees. Unless you'd like me to do it. You're doing such a fair job, a, a swell job, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind. Not a problem. Um, so at this point, we are going to have um, the nominees that are able to be with us tonight um, to speak to um, their ability and interest in serving on the Civilian Review Board. Uh, each nominee will, will have three minutes, but we're certainly going to give them um, you know, the time that's appropriate to, to, to make their comments. Uh, first, I would like to introduce uh, Ms. Janet Jackson. Ms. So thank you, Council Member Durans. Let me first say thank you to Council President Hardin and to all of the members of Council who are with us this evening. I want to say thank you for uh, giving us this opportunity as prospective members of the Civilian Review Board. And I want to continue with my thank yous. Um, I first have to say thank you to the members of the Columbus Community Safety Advisory Commission. Those um, 17 individuals, including myself, worked long and hard. Their first meeting was April uh, of 2018, and the last meeting was October of 2019. There were 24 meetings and countless um, committee meetings, but the result was to bring 80 recommendations you know, to the city, including the recommendation for the establishment of a civilian review board. And although we did not call it the Office of Inspector General, there was a recommendation that essentially is the same thing as that. And so we, we stand on the work that that uh, commission did. And then I wanna say thank you to the elected leadership of Columbus, the mayor uh, and council for accepting our recommendations and taking them forward to have them placed on the ballot uh, and then to the 75% of the voters who supported it. Uh, again, to me, this shows overwhelming support of the establishment of the Civilian Review Board and uh, the Office of the Inspector General. So in terms of experience, um, I will just look to, to my career. I'll look to my professional career first. So trained as a lawyer, and many of you have either forgotten or you wouldn't even know that uh, my first love, that I'm a civil rights lawyer, that was in fact the first work that I did in the Attorney General's office. That I served this community for almost 10 years as a member of the Franklin County Municipal Court that I was the city attorney of Columbus from 1997 to 2003. And during that time period, we actually had some significant issues with our police department. Uh, if you don't recall, I'll share the history that we were sued by the department, by the Justice Department, and I believe in 19, 19, 1998, during my tenure over the practices of our police department. And then of course, I served the community as uh, the CEO of United Way of Central Ohio for almost 14 years. And additional to the professional experience, to be quite honest, I can't share with you how many nonprofit boards I've served on or how many task force that I served on, on to take a look um, at critical issues. But probably for me, uh, when I thought about submitting my application, the most critical work was the work of the Safety Advisory Commission, to have chaired that work and to have seen the recommendations. So this is actually the first time for me to uh, meet some of the uh, individuals 
whose names have been put forward in our earlier conversation with a few folks. I shared with them, you know, how difficult this work is going to be. I think we are all prepared to do that work. Um, and Council Member Dorans, as I, as I end, I would caution us as we move forward. Uh, I am one who believes that I don't come into a situation with preconceived ideas of how things, you know, sh you know, should run. We have not met. We have the recommendations from the work group that we may or may not accept. We need to really roll up our sleeves. To me, the most important thing is to get this right in terms of building Columbus's own civilian review board, you know, looking to other cities, uh, maybe for guidance, but to make sure we build a foundation, you know, that is absolutely strong. Uh, and then to me, the second priority is hiring the best and right person to become our first inspector general. Um, but I'm hoping that my fellow potential review board members will, will say, yes, we bring our own opinions, but we need to figure out how to work together as a group of nine to get us to where we need to go. And so again, to leave those kind of, uh, we may think certain things, but let's be open and willing to listen to others. So again, I thank you for this opportunity uh, to speak with you today. And I am, although I am truly failing at retirement, I do look forward to leading the work of this, such important work for the city of Columbus. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. And um, I appreciate you mentioning your inability to retire and we are certainly the beneficiaries of that. So <laughs> thank you, th thank you for that. And I, I appreciate you mentioning the, the foundational work of how we've gotten here. Um, this did not happen overnight, whether or not uh, we're talking about the charter review amendment that was overwhelmingly passed by the voters, the work of the, of the group in order to start to bring some of these ideas together. Um, this has been a ongoing process and I know you and others have been central towards getting us here. Um, and I think to, to your point about the inspector general and what comes next, uh, we need to do, do this and have the right and best folks in place to make sure that we do this right for the city of Columbus. And so, you know, think about building that house, the, the foundation goes up and we're gonna get some walls and some ceilings and some roofs here soon enough. So um, I appreciate you bringing that kind of perspective of making sure we, we have the, the right infrastructure to, to make this do what we need it to do. So thank you for, for being here. Um, thank you. Next, next we have Mr. Mark Fluharty. Mark, you here? I'm here, Rob. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Sister Jackson, I can most certainly understand the the wanting to retire and not be able to. I was uh, retired for one day and then immediately got put to work. Uh, and it's landed me here, which has been a great adventure. And I most certainly look forward to working with everybody uh, on the committee. And we have a big job ahead of us. But let me start by saying thank you, Rob. Council Member Dorns, uh, Council President Harden, and uh, members of Columbus Council for this opportunity tonight to really let people know who Mark Fluharty is, what he's about, and why he's here. Uh, I am the director of the Central Ohio Labor Council. Uh, that is uh, located here in Columbus. I've been in the labor movement for over 30 years now. And for 27 of those years, I worked at the United Food and Commercial Workers Local 1059 as a representative and secretary treasurer. My background is in grievance handling, grievance investigation, and arbitration, uh, collective bargaining. That is the world that we will be dealing in and investigating in. Uh, and it is important, I think, to understand that world. When I applied for uh, the, the Civilian Review Board and was interviewed. I wanted to make sure that I stressed that, you know, we have to understand that world uh, and be able to investigate and to navigate because we are somewhat bound by the union contract and it is important to be able to, to navigate that. There was a, a mention earlier about 
civilian oversight and the you know what that comes with well it comes with the responsibility to get the truth to get the facts and that's what i've done really for the past 30 years we need to make sure that we can do thorough and fair investigation it's not subject to political pressure uh and i'm sure there will be a tremendous pressure on all of the group uh and sister jackson you brought up you know the ability in of sharing ideas and working together anybody that's been in any contract negotiations with a negotiating committee can most certainly understand that the the uh, ability to discuss ideas uh, and compromise recognize people in the group be respectful and come to consensus uh, and that's what we have to do our job uh, is going to be tremendous the citizens of columbus have asked for this uh, I'm honored to be in included in it. I think it's a big step forward for our city. And, you know, in the overall uh, world of police reform to be part of that. And our community has asked for it and it's our job to do it. I look forward to, you know, working and, and building the committee as we go uh, and especially, especially working towards the solicitor general with the group. and. We have a big task laid to us by our citizens, as Sister Jackson said, 80, 80 uh, things that we need to take a look at and then come up and work as a group to consensus. Uh, I think we're up to it. I'm honored to be uh, a part of it, and I look forward to working with everybody. Thanks, Rob. Thank you, Mr. Foolhardy. Um, next, we have uh, Mr. Willard McIntosh. Mr. McIntosh. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm certainly honored um, to be uh, uh, selected as a nominee. And actually, um, I didn't think I would be selected. But let me start off by saying again, I'm Willard McIntosh. Um, I was a police officer in Columbus for almost 32 years. Uh, I retired last uh, June 1st of 2020. Uh, I worked in, um, when I started my career, I worked in patrol. From there, I went to the detective bureau in burglary, um, the training academy, the recruiting unit, and last uh, unit I was a part of was uh, court liaison. I was, I was, I also, let me say this, I received a lot of congratulatory messages and well wishes um, that I certainly wasn't expecting from my um, colleagues on the police department. Some was met with skepticism as we police officers are sometimes in our culture skeptical about in, anyone outside of us, but I'm up, I'm up for the challenge. Um, I want to be a bridge builder between the community and the police. The gap has gotten so wide and we can't do it without each other. We, we, we have to be able to come together. And I think my part in that as a bridge builder is to bring understanding um, about police and police training, how we train, what we learn during our training, how we interact and communicate and how we should interact and communicate with, with, with the community. Um, so I, I hope to bring that um, experience um, to the table to help um, make us better aware of the perspective uh, of the police officer. Um, I. I want my colleagues to also know that I don't think this is about going after anybody or trying to get anybody. I, I certainly think it's it's a a, um, a chance for us to come together to uh, exchange um, ideas, to listen to each other, and to ask questions, and to to ask each other what we want from each other, what we expect from each other. 
Um, any way I can help, um, I'm willing to do that. Uh, and I hope I still, and I know I do, have the support of, of my uh, colleagues on the police department if I have to go back and ask questions of, of how, thing, uh, how, how we do things or different um, uh, different changes in training um, to get me caught up on, uh, and up to speed so I can pass that information on. So ultimately, my, my goal is to be a, a bridge builder between police department and, and the community. And I look, I look forward to working with everybody. So, so thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McIntosh. And uh, again, thank you for wanting to serve your city even as you just retired this past year. So appreciate you, you, you failing in retirement and stepping up to the, the plate yet again. So my pleasure. Uh, thanks for doing that and being here tonight with us. Um, our next nominee is Mr. Uh, Richard Nathan. Mr. Nathan. Yes, thank you. And Willard, uh, you look great for somebody who's been uh, working for just retired. I uh, hope you look as good. Thank you. Um, but uh, I just want to say thank you, uh, uh, Council President Harden and the rest of the City Council, Judge Jackson, and uh, the rest of the nominees here. Um, it'll be a privilege to serve alongside of you. Uh, I, I'm Rich Nathan. I have been the uh, I, I'm the founding pastor of Vineyard Columbus uh, here in Columbus, Ohio. So we have been the largest church in the city of Columbus for the past 15 or 20 years. Um, the church that I've been serving in is remarkably diverse. Uh, we draw from about 120 different nations, and uh, it's uh, a church that's been uh, deeply engaged in the community. So we run two free medical clinics, two free dental clinics, uh, one of only two nonprofit immigration law clinics a free legal clinic, uh, job training programs, uh, GED programs, a large after-school program. We serve about 800 immigrants each year and in English as a second language program. Uh, we've got a child care center for Title 20 kids and uh, we've got about 100 other programs that reach into the community. So I've been deeply involved in the city of Columbus for the past um, three and a half decades. Before entering the ministry, uh, I graduated from the Ohio State University College of Law and uh, uh, taught at Ohio State. I taught in the business college, uh, undergraduate and MBA courses in law and did that for five years full-time and then two years part-time before I felt called to the ministry. So I've got some background in law and lots of background in bringing people together, uh, di diverse uh, communities together, individuals and healing uh, and, and reaching out to those who have no voice. I've personally been involved in the recent funerals of uh, Casey Goodson and Andre Hill and uh, connected with their families. And I'm working uh, on a truth and reconciliation like uh, uh, commission here in Columbus, along with several of the folks, um, Mayor Ginther and, and Nancy Rogers, who was the former attorney general uh, for the state and the former dean of the law school, um, uh, Carl Smallwood, who was a uh, longtime attorney here and is co-director of the Divided Community Project, and my dear friend, Bishop Timothy Clark. Um, but uh, all that's to say that uh, I have a very strong interest in providing an opportunity for complaints in the community. 
to be fairly heard, for changes to be made in policing and um, uh, bringing about healing and reconciliation uh, in our community. Uh, there's something that uh, I read a number of years ago that I wanted to share as kind of a motivation for me. Uh, someone said there can be no reconciliation without repentance. There can be no repentance without confession. And there can be no confession without the truth. And what I see the Civilian Review Board being all about is simply telling the truth. Uh, so that reconciliation and healing, robust, consistent, honest reconciliation might occur in our community, uh, between the community and the police department. So I love the city of Columbus, and this is just a, a great opportunity for me to serve the city. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate you being here with us tonight and uh, your willingness to serve. Uh, our next nominee, I believe, is joining us on the phone. So, um, Ms. Angie, I, we're connecting with uh, Mr. Randall Sistrunk. Randall, are, are you, can you hear us? Hello, I'm here. Can everybody hear me? We can. Uh, go ahead. The floor is yours. Okay. You guys have to excuse me. I'm sitting outside at my son's baseball game, so I'm kind of, if I start yelling because he made a good play, you got to excuse that, please. Um, Completely excuse. Uh, first, I want to say hello. I want to say hello to everyone. I want to say thank you to Council President Hardin and members of Council for the opportunity to speak today. Um, I kind of want to give a quick background and then kind of talk about my qualifications. Um, I know there's probably some questions around why is an advertising guy working on the Civilian Review Board? Um, I think after speaking today, you guys will probably have a better perspective of, of, of my unique experience related to it. Um, Randall Sistrunk, um, father of two a daughter, Mayana in college, and my son, Jordan, who actually wants to become a police officer one day. Um, I graduated from Walsh University with a bachelor's in sociology and applied criminology. Um, I currently serve as the director of business development and the director of diversity, equity, and inclusion for Orange Barrel Media and our sister company, Ike Smart City. Um, prior to the, this role, uh, life looked a lot different for me. Um, grew up in um, Canton, Cleveland, Akron, East Cleveland, in the inner city, uh, with mother and father and brothers and sisters, um, addicted to drugs, living in a household plagued by drugs, gangs, prostitution, and violence. Uh, one of my earliest memories of law enforcement was my house being raided by SWAT and ATF agents and being forced to lay down, face down as an eight-year-old. Um, at the age of 18, I was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct for simply asking an officer a question. Um, and this was just one of many times living in the inner city and growing up in the inner city that I experienced, you know, being mistreated by police officers. Um, I moved to the city of Columbus about 11 years ago, and I served at the Columbus Urban League as director of the African American Mel Initiative, um, leading programming or focused around neighborhood violence intervention, working with gangs, um, fatherhood programming, reentry programming, and youth mentoring with an intentional focus really on community outreach engagement and engagement. And so after working there for a couple of years, I was afforded the opportunity to work for the city of Columbus. And in my most recent role at the city of Columbus, I was the interim director of the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. And it was during that time that I actually had an opportunity to work with the Columbus Police Department in helping to develop a 10-year strategic plan to double diversity. Um, that really afforded me the opportunity to learn more about the division, um, the culture, some of the great work that was being done, and also um, identify some areas of opportunity. Um, as I began that work and that journey, I had an opportunity to get to know police officers, from the police chief down to recruits, some of which you know I am proud to call friends. Um, and I think that this really helped to broaden my perspective as it related to police community relations. Um, I currently serve on the board for the Franklin County Community-Based Correctional Facility. Um, I also serve on the board for Afrocentric Personal Development Workshop, uh, working with um, clients that um, we offer drug and alcohol abuse counseling and also domestic violence counseling for perpetrators. Um, I recently participated on the Chiefs Advisory Council, and so I think that I have a pretty unique perspective to bring to the group. You know, I want to ensure that officers are held accountable 
but also ensuring that they're being treated fairly. I want to help establish some transparency and trust with the community. Um, and most importantly, I think, you know, my job or my role is to help play a part in preventing the next murder or execution of someone going to the store, someone playing with a toy gun in the park or simply sleeping in their bed. You know, so it, it's truly an honor and a privilege to be considered. And I really look forward to working with Chair Jackson and the other members of the Civilian Review Board. Thank you. Thank you for being with us tonight and again, your willingness to serve. Uh, the next nominee uh, before us this evening is Mr. Kyle Strickland. Kyle, the floor is yours. Of course. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Council Member Dorrance. Thank you, Council President Harden. And thank you all, uh, Council Members, um, for the opportunities to speak today. I um, also want to thank um, each of you all, prospective nominees, uh, as we uh, uh, go forward before Council and the rest of the city. You know, I want to speak directly, I think, to the broader community as well of the moment we're in now. Uh, it's hard to, to be on this call uh, just after hearing the verdict just a little over an hour ago. Um, there's a lot of different emotions that, that I'm feeling. Um, but the perspective that I want to have here is, you know, I had the opportunity to serve as a member on the work group uh, for this civilian review board, um, really looking through and understanding what are extra steps uh, for accountability and independence that we need uh, in our community here in the city of Columbus. We were behind uh, on this issue. Um, I, I thank the mayor and city council for stepping up to make the, the necessary steps to start um, some measure of accountability and process as we move forward, uh, but we have a long way to go. Um, and a part of that is understanding that the members of the Civilian Review Board still have a lot to be determined um, and a lot to be decided when it comes to the Office of Ins Inspector General, as well as some of the other confines, uh, confines and rules of the actual board makeup and structure uh, mo moving forward. And we have to do that carefully. Um, we all also have to do that in a way that's right. Um, but ultimately, my background, you know, so I'm an attorney. Uh, I work at the Kerwin Institute for the Study of Race and Ethnicity. And I also work at the Roosevelt Institute, which is a nonprofit uh, to the FDR Presidential Library and Museum. And in my work, I look at um, things like implicit bias, but also things like systemic racism and how that interacts with every single institution um, and, and it permeates uh, throughout our institutions and our society. And until we reckon uh, with, with systemic racism, with white supremacy, with systems of harms and systems of violence, then we will never truly see justice moving forward. And so it's not lost on me that uh, this civilian review board, while important, while critical, a, a critical step, it alone is not the solution uh, to public safety uh, in this community. It is one part and one puzzle to the solution, and this is progress in the right direction. And I'm grateful for leaders stepping up to be a part of it. And I'm very grateful uh, to have Janet Jackson uh, to be at the helm uh, of leading this group. But we all have to come in and recognize uh, that this is one aspect of a larger effort. And then ultimately what I want to get across is uh, community representation. Uh, this is an important piece of the Civilian Review Board is ensuring that we do have strong community representation. That's not to say that the members of this group are not representative of the community. However, it is to say that there are many uh, those in the community that have been calling for uh, reforms, have been calling for accountability, have been calling specifically for Civilian Review Board um, that are, have been uh, harmed disproportionately. Um, by systems uh, of harm and their perspectives are not always uh, at the table. And I think uh, it is important as a review board uh, that we carefully consider the structure and the makeup of the board moving forward. So we have nine members is kind of the, the setup that we have right now. Uh, but because the review board is a work in progress, I urge everyone to think about um, potential room for growth in the future, whether it's how we cycle off members or el elsewhere, I just think that's really important to make sure that representation is key. And the last thing I'll say is independence. Uh, while this is a review board that was uh, members appointed by, uh, or not selected by the mayor, and then ultimately approved or not by city council, uh, it is important for this civilian review board to distinguish itself from other commissions or other sorts of agencies because it truly has to be 
that independence if we want to build the trust, not only uh, with uh, uh, the, the broader community, but for any party that is involved in any sort of incident. Um, we will review the facts before us uh, very clearly, carefully, um, and decisively. And ultimately, at the end of the day, what, what Pastor Nathan referred to at the beginning, which is truth. Uh, ultimately, we have to reveal and show the truth. And that's what we have to get to. And that's the way we can get to it with accountability. I'm committed to doing that work. And I'm grateful to be part uh, of this effort and, and uh, would be honored to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Strickland, and I appreciate you putting the review board in context of everything that is happening here in Columbus and across the country right now. Uh, it's helpful for us to sit back and remind where this fits in the, in the broader scheme of uh, reimagining public safety here in our community. So thank you for doing so. Um, next, we have nominee uh, Reverend Charles Tatum. Reverend? Uh, good evening. Uh First, I want to thank uh, President uh, Hardin and to all the council members uh, and let you each know that I am profoundly humbled by the opportunity to serve on and aid in building this uh, 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 police community uh, review board, civilian review board. Uh, uh, first, I want to say I, I'm senior pastor of the Good Shepherd Baptist Church located in one of the most underserved and highly policed communities in the city, that being the Linden area. Uh, I too am uh, uh, very concerned about our city. Uh, I have been uh, a resident in this city since I was nine years old. Uh, I love the city of Columbus, uh, and I don't think that there's a better place to live. But I am uh, am very uh, disturbed by the amount of, uh, of gap there is between those who police us and those who live in our city. And I think that this is a very good thing that we're doing here to have an opportunity, as uh, Willard said earlier, to be able to be bridge builders, because that's what I want to do. I want to be able to be a bridge builder between those who police us and those who live in our communities. Uh, I, too, am a retiree from Norfolk Southern Railroad. I, I worked there for 38 years in their communications department. And I was, I was, I too was kind of looking forward to some retirement. Uh, uh, I can't call uh, Miss Jackson Janet Jackson because I'm so used to calling her Judge Jackson. Uh, but uh, I, I, I was looking so forward to retirement. But uh, as I know that my pastor Nathan knows, we pastors can never retire because there's always something that needs to be done in our communities, and God pushes us forward. I also serve as chair of the Concerned Lending Clergy Group in the Linden area and where we are driven to work for the betterment of the residents in Linden as a whole. And that means trying to be bridge builders with our police that serve in that area, as well as our, our community and our community leaders. Uh, so I'm, I'm very interested uh, and I, I, I don't come into this thing with any preconceived notions. I come in using it as a learning curve because I want to see how this thing is going to be put together uh, how it's going to function, uh, and I want to be a part of that. You know, I, 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 I don't want to come in here, you know, thinking that this is the way we should do something or that is the way we should do something. I want to be able to come in with an open mind, and as this body comes together, be able to uh, exchange our views, our thoughts, uh, and put together something that when we do leave this board, uh, those who come behind us or come after us, we'll see that we've laid the building blocks of something that can be built upon. And with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, and, and say thank you again. And I look forward to working uh, with this board. Pastor thank Tatum, you. Janet Jackson, I'll just say amen. I'm not sure I had anything else to add other than what Judge Jackson just added. Thank you, Reverend, for, for being with us and uh, for yet another person that's willing to use their their retirement years as community service years uh, as as you have for most of your life. So thank you. Um, our final nominee to come before council tonight is uh, Miss Mary Younger. Miss Younger. Thank you, President Harding, council members and everyone else who's present. What I'd like to first of all say is uh, I am totally impressed with uh, my fellow nominees. Uh, I know that we're going to be able to do good work. I'm, we, 
I, I'm, like I said, I'm totally impressed. I want to serve on this board because our city needs this independent board, this review board. Um, it's needed at this time because of everything that has happened. The past hasn't worked and the law enforcement needs a, an independent body and the citizens of the city of Columbus need, need an independent body. Who am I? I'm, I came to the United States at age seven. I'm an immigrant from Italy. I served as an auxiliary officer back in the uh, middle 70s when CPD had an auxiliary police force. And I went through 300 hours of training and served on the street for approximately for a year. At that time, they had vice. So I was mostly working vice, which is no longer functional. And that's a good thing. So working the street, working on the street that year had an impact on me. Even to this day, I can remember some of the things that happened. And um, some of them were not positive. So I don't, I hope that this board has some sort of an impact on the things that I remember. Um, because I can remember, I'm also a mother of a biracial son. And I can, and I can remember thinking to myself, I hope this particular officer never, my son was of course a, a baby at that point. I hope this particular officer never pulls my son over or any other child of color. And I hope that the officers, I hope because there's this civilian review board and that there will be consequences, I, I hope that no other parent has to think that, that they can at least um, act professional out in public because they will, maybe their fellow officers will at least tell them if they can police themselves in a way. So that auxiliary stint had a, an impact on me. But then the positive side, my husband, who was an OSU officer for 34 years and, and retired from Ohio State University Police, was absolutely the best. He was never part of the fray. He truly served for 34, 34 years, and I saw the best in, in a police officer. Then I went to law school and became a public defender, and for 36 years, I... I represented poor people. I worked in the trenches, so to speak, because we went to, I went to court every day. I sat across from my clients. I listened to my clients and their set of facts that when they were stopped by police, first doing misdemeanors and then doing felonies. They, I listened to videos. I watched tapes. Uh, I, I, excuse me, I listened to tapes, watched videos, cross-examined officers when we had uh, trials. If there was a motion to suppress because of an unconstitutional arrest, then we did that. We brought what happened to the street into the courtroom, into the light of day. So I have a lot of experience in talking to my clients from and bringing in what the officer did on the street to into the courtroom. but. I want, to, I want people to know also that many officers came to court after my clients had broken the law. They came to court to speak on behalf of my clients. And they would say, yeah, this happened, but I would like to see this individual get probation, or I'd like to see this reduced so he doesn't have a record. He doesn't have a felony on his record. So there's all, there are always two sides. And I come here uh, not favoring being a nominee to this, to this uh, wanting to be on this civilian review board, not favoring one side or the other, but doing what I've done for the past 36 years, which is listening and weighing the evidence, weighing what's there, and, and then working with my fellow nominees and coming to, to some sort of consensus and doing what's right for the city of Columbus and for law enforcement, because that is such an important job. And then the, the goal of this, of, the, of this body is to either discipline, exonerate, or remove, and maybe do some 
provide some more effective, more effective policing. And that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Younger. I appreciate you being here tonight and uh, sharing a little bit about your background and why you'd like to serve on, on the Civilian Review Board. Uh, at this point, um, before we go to public speakers, I wanted to see if any of my council colleagues had any comments that they would like to make. Uh, council President? Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and certainly thank you to um, the uh, nominees uh, for giving your time uh, this evening for the willingness to serve uh, our community. Uh, I appreciate uh, everyone for taking the time uh, to be a part in here from uh, these folks. Uh, during this hearing, I heard that an officer with the Columbus Division of Police shot and killed a Columbus resident on the south side of our city. We don't know very much uh, as it stands. And as we watched the verdict from Minneapolis, many talked about the sigh of relief. But there is a truth that for so many in our community, there's no relief. Um, this is not right. It's not okay. And it can't continue on. We are going to need to have the utmost transparency uh, as we go through and learn more. But the truth is, nothing that we will do uh, will bring this young baby girl back. Nothing will stop the family from grieving. Seating this board isn't going to solve all of our problems, but it is one step. We need a body like this civilian police review board and that we need uh, to fundamentally rethink safety in our city. The state's Bureau of Criminal Investigation is gonna lead this investigation and council doesn't know any more than members of the public know right now. But it certainly does put in stark view what you have been called to do in our community, each and every one of you, to provide oversight and accountability and transparency when it comes to safety and policing in our community. So uh, I appreciate each and every one of you uh, for your uh, willingness to serve. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to the chair. Thank you, Council President. Um... As I said, to start off this hearing, expectations are high of the community for what this institution should do. And I think um, your words and today underscored um, what those ex why those expectations are high uh, because of the needed transparency and accountability that this board should bring. Um, so thank you. Um, so may the council colleagues have any uh, comments or questions for the nominees before we move to public testimony? Uh, seeing none, uh, we have two public speakers that submitted speaker slips to my office to testify this evening. Um, the first is Danielle Boyd. Ms. Boyd, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. You have three minutes. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, council members, thanks for having me. My name is Danielle Boyd. I've lived and worked in the city for eight years. I'm representing the Queer Partnership for Black Liberation. Um, LGBTQ plus people not only exist in the city, Columbus is where we live, love, and build community. We host an event that attracts uh, more than 750,000 people annually with a tremendous positive economic impact for the region. The masses come to celebrate the vibrant LGBTQ community that the city often boasts about having. Our community was harmed by CPD and one of the most public policing incidents of 2017. Violent action taken against peaceful LGBTQ plus protesters by CPD. And yet again, here we are again, wholly and completely excluded from the very process we insisted was needed to protect everyone. No seat at the table, no voices in the process, no role for us, more empty rhetoric. This is insulting, this is infuriating, it is hurtful. It is also typical and is unexpected. Um, no, nevertheless, we believe that change is possible. We know it. Thus, we supported the establishment of the Civilian Review Board. According to the city, the city of Columbus is home 
uh, to one of the largest populations of residents identifying as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or transgender. Columbus has long sought to protect the rights and secure the safety and well being of those citizens who often find themselves subject to oppression and attack. Representation matters. We recognize and appreciate the diversity of the nominees here. However, there are more identities in the city. Refusing to honor additional intersectional identities through visible and out leadership is an exclusionary practice that further separates us from our survival and our thriving. We are asking the city council to challenge the nominations. Please consider reevaluating qualified applicants that are vocal and or visible about who they are and how they show up for the city. With over 200 applicants, they certainly exist. Feel free to contact me if you need names. We saw the list. Uh, please inspire confidence to, in us by allowing out qualified individuals to help hold everyone accountable, allowing them to be values neutral and uphold just policies that make the city of Columbus the exemplar for inclusiveness and acceptance and the pro progressive social action it posts to be. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boyd, for, for being here tonight and for your advocacy. Um, Next public speaker we have is Aurora uh, Dassin. Dassin, or are you with us? Council member, I'm sorry, she is not. Okay, um, that concludes the, the public speaker portion of, of tonight's hearing. Um, again, wanna thank the, the individual nominees for their testimony uh, here tonight. And uh, for starting, I think what the city can see is a conversation between the members about um, what needs to happen for this uh, civilian review board to be successful and to have the kind of accountability and transparency that we know is, is required. I uh, want to thank the council staff and the CTV uh, who worked to make the, tonight's hearing possible here virtually. Um, if any members of the public would still like to comment on the list of nominations to the review board, uh, you can email me personally at radorns, D-O-R-A-N-S, at columbus.gov. Um, it's the best way to reach me and certainly share, and I will share any of that uh, testimony or any of those comments with my fellow members of council. Um, as uh, they currently stand, these appointments will appear for passage at our next Columbus City Council meeting uh, held this Monday, April 26th at 5 p.m. Uh, council President, thank you for your leadership on, on this issue, your partnership uh, throughout this entire process. Um, and I wanna turn the back the floor back over to you for any closing comments that you might have. No, thank you, uh, Chair, um, and thank you to um, again to the to the uh, nominees to this important uh, review board. I want to thank the mayor and his team for their uh, diligent work uh, in getting us these nominees. We look forward to the public feedback. We look forward to discussing among colleagues, and we look forward in advancing a slate of uh, folks to seat the Civilian Review Board. Uh, Director, I would be remiss not to ask if you had any uh, uh, final comments. Deputy Chief, I called you Director. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. I got a little uh, shell shock there. Um, <laughs> Uh, just wanted to thank you again. Um, I think that the one thing I wanted to say is during the interview process, I was blown away by the caliber of people that wanted to give their time to this. Um, and I think we feel really confident about the people that were advancing. So thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Chair, you want to close us out? Or do, do any closing comments from maybe especially from the chair of safety, uh, Chair Brown, is always uh, helpful in these moments. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I will say to all of those who are nominees, uh, especially my friend Janet Jackson, who I've known for an awfully long time. Um, we start. I was involved in a civilian review board in Cleveland in the 1980s. Uh, and it still exists to this day. This, but the world has changed since then till now. And for each and every one of you, the engagement is going to be significant. I think the thing that is probably most important is having an open mind. Uh, you heard the council president just say that there has been a police officer involved shooting. Unfortunately, we live in a time of violence, but as a civilian review board, you will have the opportunity to review all those different activities, especially when they involve misconduct. An open mind is absolutely unequivocally 
invaluable. And I say that to each and every one of you. So please take that into consideration. And again, I, I want to say on behalf of my council colleagues and certainly the council president and my relationship with the mayor, thank you for engaging in this responsibility. Uh, it is an awesome responsibility because again, it deals with the quality and the competency of our law enforcement performance. That there's no greater responsibility. So with that, again, I say thank you for your engagement. And uh, Chair, uh, I have to say to uh, my friend Janet Jackson, I will take your advice, Janet. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair uh, Dorans. Would you like to close us out? And yeah. Well. Um... Thank you to my council colleagues for, for being here tonight. Um, again, I would encourage all members of the public um, to continue to engage with council uh, on this issue and every other um, as we can continually consider ways for us to change the way that we approach public safety within our community here in Columbus. As I think Mr. Strickland mentioned earlier, this is a significant part of that, but it's not the only part. And um, that is important for the community to continue to be engaged uh, on this. And uh, as the council moves us into the future on this uh, in partnership with, with the mayor's office as well. Um, so with that, um, happy to gavel out this hearing and appreciate everyone being here tonight and their engagement. Have a good evening.